As we heard in the First Lady's proclamation, and as we know, our university began with the dream of five industrious brothers who wanted to create a college right here in Muncie. But their aspirations weren't the first attempt to bring higher education to our city. In fact, as you know, there were four prior efforts to start a college or a university here. The Eastern Normal School in 19, excuse me, in 1899, Palmer University in 1902, the Indiana Normal School and College of Applied Technology in 1905, and the Muncie Normal Institute in 1912. All four of these initial attempts failed. But these unsuccessful efforts were not total failures. To the contrary, these unsuccessful efforts demonstrated some important positive attributes about our predecessors and about our community. Our founders were innovative and creative. They embraced risks and they were courageous. They were persistent and tenacious. And most importantly, they had the audacity to dream bold dreams. Those previous attempts to start a college in Muncie did not deter the Brawl brothers. They were temporary setbacks that they were determined to overcome. And as we celebrate our 100th anniversary, we share our pride in our founders' achievements. As a result of their vision and as a result of their generosity, we are here tonight, gathered as a university, gathered as a community, to kick off the year-long celebration of our centennial. It is, no doubt, a momentous time in the history of our university and our community, a time during which we recognize how our university has served Muncie, and East Central Indiana, and the state of Indiana, and our world. It is a time for us to honor the accomplishments of our faculty, our staff, our students, and our alumni. And it is an opportunity for us to celebrate what I believe is perhaps the most important attribute of our university, one that has been a constant throughout our institution's history. This public university proudly proclaims its commitment to certain enduring values, to excellence, integrity, social responsibility, respect for all people, and gratitude. Beneficence, the iconic statue of our university, she symbolizes these values. She was completed in 1937 during an era when many Americans were extremely poor. Yet in the midst of the Great Depression, the citizens of Muncie donated $450,000 to commission beneficence. And then our friends and our neighbors, they chose to install her right here on our campus. Now, many things have changed in the first 100 years of our university, but what remains a constant is our history of gratitude a history personified in this beautiful symbol of our past, a symbol that will guide us into the future. A century ago, it was the generosity of the Ball brothers who provided the land for this institution. But it was the generosity of the people of Muncie that sustained and grew their vision to bring higher education to East Central Indiana. I am grateful for their efforts. And in the months to come, I look forward to embracing our centennial events projects and activities with an abiding sense of gratitude for the women and men who founded this institution and for the people who have transformed it into the outstanding university that we have now inherited. We are about to enjoy the premiere of one of those projects, our student-produced centennial documentary. It's called From Normal to Extraordinary, Ball State's First Century. I want to thank first the John W. Anderson Foundation for providing the funding for this documentary. I'm also grateful to Professor Jim Reinhart for composing the music for the film and to the Ball State Symphony Orchestra for providing the live accompaniment tonight. I also want to thank Chris Luke from the, Depart Fluke from the Department of Telecommunications. He brought a fan club. I want to thank Chris, who wrote the script along with the students and for serving as the faculty advisor to this project. And most importantly, I want to thank the students, more than 30 students who are responsible for every aspect of the film that we are about to see tonight. A project of this size 
and scope requires a lot of talent and a lot of skill. And it requires thousands of hours of hard work. Now, some universities would hire a company, a private company, to do this work. But at Ball State, we entrust these critical responsibilities to our students. What makes a Ball State immersive learning experience like this one so valuable is that it, it is a real-world experience that is comparable to those that await our students once they graduate. Jacob Cannon, a senior who assisted with camera work on the documentary, described this project as, quote, a valuable sink or swim kind of learning experience. And in the words of Jacob's instructor, Chris Fluke, here's what Chris said, the students aren't play acting or experimenting with what it is to be a professional who is working on the set of a documentary. They are doing it. The challenges they face are real and the challenges are unplanned and the students have to devise solutions to those problems and figure it out. My role was to get them gear, get them resources, and then get the heck out of the way. You know, every day, every day I am proud to serve as the president of Ball State University. But on nights like this one, when I witness the extraordinary impact of our university, I am most proud and most grateful to serve as the president of Ball State University. And it is my distinct honor, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce from normal to extraordinary Ball State's first century. <laughs>